continuing on with our series about the uh, open arm and we have a previous video that I will link up in the corner so that you can start with a little bit of continuity I want to talk about what's already inside of the open arm repo you have a ROS2 node and uh, you know inside the ROS2 node there's there are plenty of it to to use they have uh, a move it package with uh, kinematic solvers already inside and you can take a look through the you know the initial uh, repository has great tutorial on how to both build the open arm but also what is it used for uh, safety guidelines how to contribute etc so I have had a team build the open arm from scratch uh, sourcing all the components and it's relatively easy to source just follow the build materials exactly so we did kind of a long deep dive from the first video kind of showing how to get the open arm just visible in Isaac Sim and Isaac Lab. And now there's an Isaac Lab repo as of, I believe I recorded this uh, a few weeks ago. So um, the, the repo had been up for a couple weeks. And as you look inside of the repo, there's already some skills or some tasks already defined one is a reach task one is a bimanual reach task as well and if you run these tasks you'll notice that um, they do there's something pretty simplistic but they're still doing its job what I've added to this is a Ross kind of baseline that's a it's a base bridge and so we'll go over that Once the Isaac Sim uh, task has been built and Isaac Lab is running, you'll see that the first thing it tries to do is just reach a target point. And you can see here that there are a uh, thousand uh, GPU based environments spun up. You can see the steps as it is training. Here I am, uh, this is a playback that we're showing right now, but I've already trained this particular task. And all that's happening is, is where the marker has been placed, we want the uh, robot to make it to that marker every time. So you can see here, it's training, um, it's running its current steps, and then uh, actually it's playing, uh, tra I'm sorry, training. And then uh, here, Similarly, we want to go back and do the same thing for the other two armed robots. You can see here it's wiggling its way up to the target position. And, you know, as it goes along, it's able to reach its target position, um, you know, while it's training. So you can see here, this is the results of training a thousand uh, simultaneously. And it's quite cool because then we can do things like tell the robot to go to a position. You can see here that the grippers stay closed in this particular training, but it does make it to the target position, although shakily, but it gets there over time. As you can see, there it is, it makes it to its target position. Now, we don't want, uh, you know, not to offend people with Parkinson's, but it does look like it has Parkinson's. We don't want that to be the case going forward so this this form of reinforcement learning is quite good but we also want to and there we go as you can see um, at, toward the end of its training that it's much better than at the start as usual i am using the uh, uh, github copilot to, to help me look through these repos and not ne necessarily spending uh, in-depth time in every file to try to figure out what it does i'm asking hey what, what you know what what do you do and where is it and therefore uh you know the uh github copilot kind of directs me to where things are much easier than me reading the entirety of the repo which i did anyway because i thought it was pretty interesting to read as you can see here we're going through training and we're at the uh looks like 400th step or so and is a thousand steps, so uh, my choices are to tell you a joke or to uh, 
uh, fast forward this process a little quickly. But in the middle of this, the I'll tell you what the idea that I started with and where I'm at in the journey. Uh, as of this recording, uh, I believe this is the end of October, around Halloween. And, um, and I, of course, I did the voiceover a little bit later. But my idea was to go bring one robot all the way through from things like, you know, Isaac Sim, very simple, moving the robot in the simulator and then the real robot using Isaac Sim, Isaac Lab, training different tasks, um, dynamically training tasks, so putting objects in front of the robot and, and then doing a dynamic training uh, set of episodes, and I'll explain what that is in a follow-on video. But the idea here is we're just trying to you know, get the robot to go to a position first. And then once we're absolutely sure it goes to a position, then we move on to uh, the next task. And in this, in this particular case, uh, one of the next tasks will be uh, move it and using a inverse kinematic uh, policy, uh, making sure the grippers work as well in that, um, you know, in that journey. So you can see here as we get to, you know, later on uh, training episodes, it's holding that position very well. Uh, and if I change the where the position is supposed to be, it will move over to that position uh, to where the new marker is very well. And this is after about, uh, you know, halfway through training. And so what you get from this is I can say things like, all right, the, you know, there's a carrot on the table. Go get the carrot, move your position to the carrot, open your gripper and pick up the carrot. And now, it, likely the most interesting thing you can see here is you can see uh, here, I'm uh, you, deciding to use the hands and the rest of the body to move the robot um, using media pipe. So as you can see, um, I'm able to overlay the camera view um, onto the, the Isaac Sim window and now I'm also, uh, I decided to, to put in a little small helper as to where to position your arms when you're you know, going to move the robot. So this is uh, talking about the, you know, the, the things that you can implement here, single arm, multiple arm, uh, cameras on device or not. And here I'm gonna stand up. And once it sees me, it now starts to move the arms according to what it sees. And this will make my, my training efforts much easier. So I think I'm going to make it a little bit bigger to show you what the robot's actually doing. It holds its last pose until it finds your arms again. Then it slowly moves itself back like a normal robot would do. Um, and then now you can see it's, it's fine in the pose. Now, Whenever it loses my uh, gripper, where, where, where the uh, joints are, then you start to see a little bit of shakiness because it doesn't quite understand what to do with its arms next. But you can see here, uh, if uh, you could reach the block, which the block has um, been pushed away on purpose, then you know I would be able to grab it. You can see the grippers uh, also can close because it knows my finger position. And this is where we are today. Anyway, have a great day and look for part three.